Disclaimer. We are two regular guys who love to talk Bone Thugs and Harmony. We do not represent Bone Thugs or any Bone affiliate. We are also not Bone Thugs experts. The views and information you hear in this podcast may be based on personal opinion. Please feel free to leave corrections and clarifying information in the comments. And enjoy. Welcome to Beyond the Harmony, my brother. Thank you for coming on. No doubt, no doubt. Thank you for having me. So I I don't know if you've had a chance to check out any of the the other episodes that we do, but uh, our show's a little bit different. Uh, we we always have a a lot of different kind of questions that you you know I know you've done a lot of interviews we probably got some questions you haven't been asked before we usually try to get right through the uh, the ones that you've probably been asked a bunch but before we dive into any of the music before we dive into any bone any mo thug poetic hustlers before we talk any of that uh, I'm looking at the numbers the Cleveland Indians they're 34 and 29 their first place well, where do do you see this vibe from the tribe continuing? Are, are we going to see the Indian dominance for the rest of this season? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. We're number one in the, in the you know, the, uh, the league right now. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying world series coming up. Yeah. We, uh, it, it, it looks good for him. I know Cleveland needs that right now. It was a it was a tough loss with uh you know with the the Cavaliers. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. That that was a a tough one to take. I, I will say, uh, Le, LeBron is the man. No matter if it was a a four and out or not, that that guy is uh he he's truly the goat. I don't know where he's going after this season, but I'm I'm excited to see what the guy does. No matter what, still right. a fucking all-star performance from that guy the whole series most definitely so <clears throat> moving out of that big big cleveland fan i assume born, born and raised in cleveland cleveland your whole life or yes sir yes sir born and okay. raised yes sir all right so <clears throat> that that will bring me into this then you cleveland born and raised uh how how did you meet how did you get hooked up with with bone i mean was it school or what's your story there with that connection well, it actually, uh, it actually came about uh, my cousin, uh, Sam, which is um, a member, an original member of the Graveyard. He actually, um, he actually introduced me uh, to Crazy. Crazy had just wow. come home from uh, doing a stint in prison, and um, we were already, me, Sam, and Tombstone, we were already, like, you know, um, in the neighborhood. So uh, when Crazy came home, uh, you know, uh, um Sin introduced me to him, and the rest is, you know, as you say, is history. Do you, Do you remember around? Like, I mean, was that before they did like the faces of death and shit like that? Was that before that? Time? Well, this is this is this is uh, shortly. This is shortly after faces of death. Gotcha. So faces of death by this point is is released and it's out there. But they got, but they're it's out there. But they they haven't got that Easy E deal or anything yet. They haven't taken off. To, to no, hadn't, hadn't even no, nope, hadn't even taken off yet. And, um, as a matter of fact, they were still with a uh, a guy by the name of Kermit, who yeah. uh, who ran a, a a a record store by the name of Dow's Rapid Creation. Yeah, and then of course they had the the Stony Burke uh, Jam It recordings, and they they brought right. a lot of artists. Did did you guys ever do anything with Kermit or any of his labels or anything like that? No, sir. No, sir. We we didn't really uh really push forward or do anything musically until 
uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony became Bone Thugs and Harmony, and they came back and swooped up Mo Thug. Gotcha. So, so okay. I got so, a quick, 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 I got a quick question there. So, and that's interesting to to know that uh, you and Sin are cousins. So, how did you wind up with Poetic Hustlers and not Graveyard Shift? Well, actually, what happened was um, I myself had had just come home from um, doing a, a eighteen eighteen month stint in prison. Um, this was my actual. This was my actual first number, and. Um, um, Around the time that uh, the guys were shooting the the, the video, Huggers um, Huggers Bone, I will in general, you know, um, going through those procedures, getting ready to be sent off. Um, I had a, a phone conversation with Busy the same day that they shot the the Thuggish Ruggers Bone video, and he let me know that you know they were back in the city, they were they had touched down, and uh, they were busy shooting the video, and that um, Bonehead and take care of what I need to handle, take care of my, my business. And once I came home, I, I definitely had a spot waiting for me with the family. You know, um, Mo Thug was originally a, a street clip. And um, actually, we, we uh, you know, we, we turned it into something more positive. Um, yeah. And, um, <clears throat> um, and it went from there. So you, so you had said um, basically uh, I come home from prison. Um, crazy picks me up from home, and you know we go to the um, the uh, one of the the bigger hotels here in Cleveland downtown, and um, I get to meeting you know every all the other members of uh, Mo Thug. Um, I was introduced to uh, Archie and Brenna. Already knew uh, Jazz from Two True. Already knew her from. Um, uh, daycare as as youngsters, we were maybe about four or five. I've been knowing oh, Jazz for years. Yeah. yeah, so you know, um, I have I have a history. I have a history with everybody in most of us. You know, brothers, um, through school, meeting by chance, or you know, what I'm saying I, I I have I have a history with everyone in most of us. Um, 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 so uh, with that being said, I was introduced to Brooke and Tom. And um, once they, uh, I knew Tone from um, high school, actually. We had a couple classes in high school. Even though he was a little older than me, I took some of the older classes during ninth grade. So um, that's how I ended up knowing Tony Tone, as, as well as him living in the same neighborhood that I did. Um, introduced me to them guys, and, you know, we, uh, my, my initial response was, you know, um, they needed another member, so what we we ended up doing was we checked the vibe and see how you know we just clicked together and see if if everything meshed. And once we got that established, we you know it it, it was on and popping. That's dope. I yeah, I, and you know I'll tell you you know as as a fan, uh, you know you you wouldn't know that you know poetic hustlers was put together you know, later, you know, in the situation like that. I mean, because you guys right. clicked and, and vibe so well on the, you know, not just even on the music, but I mean, even the videos, you guys, you know, vibe so well. Um, so Poetic Hustlers was was a product put together, you know, for Mo Thugs. Who came up with like the name, you know, for you guys? Was was that you or I mean, or like you guys as Poetic Hustlers or I mean, did Bone have something to do with that? No, actually, actually, I believe it was... Um more or less it was lazy and uh tony tone and boogie night because as i said we were all already established as a group before i came into the picture yeah See, i was actually supposed to be either solo or i was supposed to be with graveyard ship i i initially wanted to be just a solo artist. um and um Again, once once the guys came to me and said, "Hey, we need an extra member because there were three poetic hustlers before I even into the piece. Um, whatever happened with the the the, the other guy, um, they ended up letting him go about his his way, and that's where I came along. Introduced, we matched, we vibed. It was it was a go, and here we are. Wow. Do you remember the actual, you know, I, I know you got the call from Busy. Um, the day that you went, you know, to the hotel and everything, was that the day you actually got your official Mo Thug record deal? No. Actually, we didn't get the, um, n neither of us, n neither of the members of Mo Thug didn't get the actual record deal until, I want to say, like maybe uh, six or seven months after meeting. 
once we once we uh reached once we uh reached California, that's when we actually um signed off on the on the uh the record deal. And that was uh I wanna say um late late ninety six. Where where, where okay. did you guys record shots to the double glock? I believe they actually recorded that somewhere in in, um, in California. I actually wasn't available to be on that track because you know I was still I was still in prison at the time. Right. So that so that stuff. Wow. So that's crazy. So that was all going on. So you pretty much came right out of the can, right into. I mean, pretty much yeah. right into this record deal situation. Right into it. So actually, awesome. I'm fresh. When you hear the when you actually hear the Poetic Hustles album, I'm fresh out of the can. That that was like my first recording ever. Wow. You know, yeah, straight out the can. So the, and and that was the first recording that like you'd put down in your career. You you hadn't yes. recorded anything before. Yeah. No, and that was that was the very first. Wow. But was that something that you wanted to pursue though? Was being you know like a like a rapper before you went in, or I mean, was this just kind of like? Hey, we, we want you part of this, Actually, and we know you can do it. Truthful, um, I didn't know that um, I would be, you know, as as far as rapping goes, that I would be doing that. Yes, to your your question, your 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 overall question. Yes, this is something that I, I I initially wanted to do, and I knew that this was something that I would be great at as a as a child. You know, I always knew that hey, I would be on somebody's videos. I would be and on some big stage, and you know, I'll be making a couple of something that I, I, to my heart, wanted to, you know, to be a reality in my life. We're we're uh, Mohar, we're losing you just a little bit. You're uh, you were breaking up just a little bit um, during that last piece. <clears throat> um, yeah, when, and, um, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm, um, it's something that I actually wanted to do in life. You know, I've always aspired to, you know, be in somebody's uh, cameras, on somebody's stage, performing, recording. I've always, that's always been, you know, a, a, a goal of mine. Yeah. And some people, I mean, some people just, uh, you know, have it in, in their DNA. You know, they, they just know it. And, and I think you saying, you know, I was in the can. I came right out of the can. I, I dropped these songs. We did these videos. I mean, it looks like you had done this for years and years of your life. So, I mean, it, it almost looks like this was just embedded in, you know, in you. Right. Um, before you guys ever did Poetic Hustlers, of course, the Poetic Hustlers were on the Mo Thugs debut, uh, the Family Scriptures album. A lot of the other Mo Thugs told me that you guys didn't necessarily know you were recording tracks for that big group project. I mean, was that your same experience or did you kind of know your songs were going towards that big group project? I actually knew that um, the songs that we were doing was actually going towards the big product. So I, I put in, I put in the time and effort and the work, the work ethic to get that, get that done. How, how many tracks did you guys make to submit for the Mo Thug Family Scriptures album? Was it just Search for Peace, or did you produce any other products for that? No, actually, uh, actually, there's two. Um, the searching for peace, and then you have the uh, you have the um, the um, <coughs> you have the last the last song on the on the album, uh, yeah. which I contributed to as well. Yep, and yeah. that was and that was done for both compilations. Yeah, because we were right. going to say the, the the big Mo Thug, you know, like the the posse cuts. You're on both of those, and I think on the on the one on the second record, you're the only uh, member of Poetic Hustlers on the the big outro on the second one, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, you know uh, we have Mo Thug, and then we have the uh, the other side, which I'm actually on as well. Yeah. For the second right. for the second compilation. W was there a reason you weren't on Mo Thug Family Tree that was on Art of War? Yes, I was. On I was on the too. We actually yes, the Poetic Hustlers actually we recorded something uh, uh, simultaneously. We were all together when we record it. So if you hear the, when you hear the poetic hustlers is, is not just one of us or two of us, it's all three of us. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So you'll actually hear, you'll actually hear three different voices harmonizing and, and, you know, um, sing it. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That's dope. That's dope, man. I, 
do you remember, I mean, you guys as mo thugs, so now, you know, now you guys are signed, of course, family scriptures is out, it, I mean, it, you know, and especially in the bone world, I mean, it blows up, right? I mean, this is as bone fans, this is like right. next level shit for us. We had bone right. and now it's like, we got a whole crew. Um, right. You guys did a lot of tours. You, do you remember doing all those, those tours? We always hear about these mo thug tours and just how wild those situations were for you guys back then. Oh, yeah, I, I remember all of those tours. I remember them like they were yesterday. Yeah, so we, we had Soldier Boy on recently, and uh, he, you know, that's like some of his, his fondest memories, he says, is is doing those tours just because uh, you guys were all together, and, and he really says that, you know, back then, 96, uh, 97, that, you know, Mo Thugs was, was really a, a, a family. So he says those were some of the best times of those tours. Exactly. Yes, they were. Who who were you, you closest with, with with in the Mo Thugs back then? You said who was I close with? Yeah, who who were you? Because I you know I, I've I've talked to other Mo Thugs and they're like you know we were so big that it was hard to be close with everyone. So some of us are you know were closer than others. Who you know who were you close with back then in in that crew? Well, of course, um, um, poetic hustlers. Then you know there was uh, of course I was close to crazy busy. Um, I had moments with Flesh. I had moments with uh, uh, Wish. Um, I, I'm definitely close with Trey, Graveyard Chef. You know all the members of the Mo Thug, all the family members in Mo Thug. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the loving guy, and you know, I'm the heart of the of the, of the family. You know, what I'm saying I love everybody. You know, so I, I, I really. There's not a, a a like or a dislike. You know, what I'm saying I, I, I love yeah. everybody equally. Were there any other Mo Thug posse cuts that you guys recorded that didn't come out or didn't make the cut? Uh, yes, actually, um, um, Poetic Hustlers had a um, a song called uh, "Hustler 3 D" um, that we actually recorded, and um, we never we never uh, uh, utilized that one. Uh, we also have some um, some tracks. We actually did an original "Cross Me and You Die" where we um, we had. Um, Debo, we had Tiny Lister yeah. uh, really? as uh, as he was actually was supposed to do the um, the skit for uh, Cross Me and You Die. I believe we actually ended up using someone else. Uh, um, ah. Shouts out, shouts out to Tiny Lister, uh, but uh, we didn't actually use his his um, his um, his contribution because <laughs> he uh, he kind of went into a, like. Um, um, a, a, a version of uh, Hood, and then he added like some WWF type. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he like went into a, a WWF flashback on his life. Mm. He, he had Chuck Hogan, Macho Man, Savage, cross cross the uh, party hustles and you die. You know something like that. To matter of fact, <laughs> we were like, I was like, oh wow, like he really went in, like. <laughs> So, so do you think that Hustler Three Deep will make it onto Street Gospel, or is that kind of just in the past and that's it? Um, well, we would definitely have to do some uh, revitalizing to that, and and really, um, um, really get you know do some changes to it because um, it's actually in order for us to put it on the Street Gospel, it, we would have to really um, you know um, really get down to the meaning of Hustler 3D, we would have to change the meaning of Hustler 3D because as, as it stood back then, you know, it, 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 it basically meant it's, it's three of us. We, we, we Hustler 3D, you know what I'm saying? You don't get, you don't get one without the other two. You know what I'm saying? You don't get one you, without the others. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to get all three of us. You know what I'm saying? No matter what situation we roll together. So, um, and we were basically talking about hood stuff back then. But see, um, being as though we're we're um, you, you know we're, we're we've come to a positive um, uh, standpoint in life, you know we we have to change the the message, you know, in in, in the appearance of where we're trying to project this. I yeah. support the positivity. Be, right. Be, before we jump into you know before we jump into the new record because we, believe me we're gonna talk about that. Um, 
I, I, I want to, you know, I, I, I guess we're going to just talk a little bit. We've talked a little bit about Mo Thugs, um, but, you know, I know you've done a lot of interviews, so I didn't want to beat you up with the same Mo Thug questions that you've been asked a lot. Um, well, I do want to talk specifically about, you know, just the, the Poetic Hustlers uh, album for a second. You know, <clears throat> John and I, anytime we talk about, you know, Mo Thugs, because, of course, there's, you know, the Mo Thug albums, but then we know that Too True had an album come out, you guys had an album come out, and then Graveyard Shift had their album that, you know, didn't end up out. Um Right. What what was the do, do you know what the decision was or who made the decision and why that Poetic Hustlers was going to be the the second you know release like what what brought that about because it's such a big roster um, you know to pick true true but uh, to answer your question I'm really not for sure I I, I believe they just went along with. Um, who they who they felt would would um, would would be better coming out next, you know, after yeah. you know after Too True or you know before Graveyard Shift, you know, I I believe they just it, it was a um, whatever system they used, they 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 came up with a decision amongst themselves, uh, meaning um, the heads of Mo Thugs, yeah. Lazy Bone, Crazy Bone. It, it must have been a real exciting moment for you guys to find out, Hey, you, you guys are next up. We're going to have to have you record a record. Or did you guys already have a lot of material recorded by the time you found out? You no, put that we didn't have, out? we didn't have any material in. Okay. Wow. Wow. We didn't have any Amazing. outside of, you know, uh Boog and tones contribution to the shock, to the double glock. We had no, 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 nothing. So everything, Man. everything from everything from trials and tribulation was done right in straight from the straight you know it, it went in we went in straight from the from the from the gate yeah and you know we had romeo we had romeo antonio on the show and uh you know and, and he was talking about your record and he was like you know we he, he was talking about how how much time went into it and and it was because the music you know outside of the rhymes outside of any of the lyrics i mean even the music on trials and tribulation is is beautifully composed i mean those are you know, it, it, it's a great record, and it seemed to me like, you know, they they really thought uh, you guys were gonna be the, you know, the the big next thing because you guys had a feature from, you know, Crazy, one from Lazy, one from Flesh, one from Wish, and then of course we know you got Busy Bone, the Busy Bone cameo, and to my knowledge, that's like the only Mo Thug related thing that that Busy Bone did that whole time was showing up in in your video. Yes. And shouts, I want to give shouts out to all the producers, Romeo, Antonio, you know, crazy, you know, anybody that had anything, you know, uh, musically to contribute to the Poetic Hustlers album, shouts out. Much love. Yeah. And, and just Everybody so you know, we, consist, we consistently list the Poetic Hustlers, Trials and Tribulations as the number one Bone Affiliate Mo Thug album that came out. We, we love the whole thing front to back. It's, it's one of the best. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate it. it. It's we definitely it's that appreciate sound, that. that. That sound is special to me that you guys made because, you know, Mo Thugs had a unique sound, and and I think a lot of times it gets umbrellaed under Bone, but it's it's not Bone. Mo Thug had its own sound, and and even Poetic Hustlers was its own sound, but it all it all went together. Um, right. That as far as the Poetic Hustlers sound. Uh, was there a lot of influence from, you know, like crazy and, and lazy in them, like on, you know, what you guys should do, or was that just the three of you with the producers just, you know, making that happen? We actually, we came up with our own styles, uniqueness, and, uh, we actually put, put it together. You know what I'm saying? We actually formulated who we are, the sound that you hear. We, we contributed to that, you know, um, yeah. lyrically and, Contributed to um, um, some sounds on on track. Oh, we're we're losing you again, Mohart. Uh oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay, um, yeah. Once we once we got together and we really vibe, like like water, it just it just flows. Yeah, I mean, you know, go ahead, John. 
Do, do you know if, if Tony Tone and Boogie Nike were doing any form of rapping prior to um, Poetic Hustlers? Because we know you weren't, but I always wondered if they were. Well, Tony Tone was actually a, a, um, a singer. Uh, he, he did a lot of performances singing and, and dancing. Oh, shit, okay. Yeah, Boogie Knight, um, I don't really think he did too much too much rapping or singing um, or music, period. You know, um, he was more of a street guy, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he just made a, a, a change to, you know, something different, something uh, uh, legitimate. Yeah, that's amazing because all three of you guys have a character and not all rappers have characters and you're well, de well developed. It, it, as you listen to it, it feels like there's years built into all three of you guys. And to find out that <laughs> this was just your rookie effort. First time you ever did it is, is phenomenal. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that I is, appreciate it. It, it. It's a, uh... It, it is a special record, it, you know, it's special for that time, that time period as well. I mean, just that whole, again, 95 to like 97, especially in the bone world, like what a what an amazing time for all of you guys. Um, a, a second ago, I had brought up the Trials and Tribulations video and, and the Busy Bone cameo. Can you just tell us how that came about? How, how did that happen, that Busy Bone? And I mean, Flesh and Bones in it, Romeo Antonio's in it, but I mean, Super special that Busy Bones in your video, and and we were saying earlier on the show before you got on. Not only is he in it, but I mean that guy, he he performs in your video like he's like featured in it, bro. He, right, he gave you guys right. everything. Did, oh, so good. Yeah. Did I, well, did, actually, um, how we came about that was uh, we were all in, we were all in Cali, and um, um, we had just. Um, had a, a, a night with Busy. We were over at his house and, you know, we were all sitting around, we were talking and everything, and we let him know that we were going to shoot scenes for, you know, our video, our first debut single, and uh, we would like him to, you know, to be in it. And um, he, he, you know, he obliged us. And uh, it was, you know, it was, um, it was great. You know, yeah. uh, we, we, we loved his contribution and it, it actually, uh, added a heightness, you know, it gave us the heightness to, you know, uh, to come across the way we did in the, in the actual video. Yeah. I mean, because that the energy that, was the energy, the energy was just through the roof that day. You can tell as a, as a fan watching it, that, that scene on the steps with the poetic hustlers and, and busy in flesh, you can tell that the five of you are just like you know, v vibing. It's almost like you don't even give a fuck if the camera's there or not. You're like, we're, we're just, we're, we're in the zone and you can see that. Yes. Yeah. Shouts out to, shouts out to Busy Bone. You know, uh, uh, if y'all didn't know, that's, that's where I acquired, uh, that's who I acquired the name Mohart from. Ah. Well, okay. Yeah, we used to that was going to be one of our out. questions. Yeah. That was going to yeah. be one of our questions is how, how that name came about. I actually was, um, I actually went by the name Half Pint at one point. Oh, ah. shit. Oh, shit. Okay. So, so, so Busy and I were, we were uh, walking through the neighborhood one day, and um, we actually went down to one of the neighborhood swimming pools, and we were talking. We were just having a long talk. We were smoking a couple L's and everything. We had a... Um, we had a fifth of rose, you know, by, back at that time, you know, you always hear them talking about the, uh, the, you know, sipping on rose and, you know, me flipping on the rose. We were having a, we were having a, 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 a deep conversation one day. And as we were walking home, carrying a, a, a big uh, steel barrel to burn, to burn out of, you know, we took taking turns carrying this barrel back to our hood, which is the double glock. You know, we talking, and he was like, man, you know what? He was like, from now on, your name should be, you should call yourself Mo Hart because you the smallest out of everybody in the clique, and you got Mo Hart. <laughs> so so I, I embraced that, and I, and I you know, I, I, I took that on, and, and that's, who, that's who I am, you know? So I, 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 I carry that name proudly. Yeah, so, that is a so good we, fucking story. Yeah, and, and that puts together a piece of the puzzle we were talking about before you came on. Somebody had mentioned there was a song called Slugs and Thugs featuring Half Pint. 
Okay. Do you remember? Do you remember anything about that? Because obviously you're half pint. So do you remember no. a song called Slugs and Thugs? No. No. <laughs> no. I told oh. I told you, John. I told you the fans were just making up crazy shit. Some. <laughs> but, they, yeah. but they knew about half. But how did they know about half pint? I mean, well, that, because I didn't he's, know about he's been about. shouted out. He's been shouted out. In, yeah. Uh, well, like if you, know, you as, if you look at the um, if you look at the sleeve inside of the uh, Trials and Tribulation album, you know, um, you know, Mohart, aka Half Pipe. You know. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I we actually as a follow up to to the name question for you, Mohart. Uh, Lauren G from the BTNH board online, he he wanted to know why the exclamation point uh, in the middle of your name, the Mo exclamation point heart. Because it gives you the indication that there's more there's more to me than, than just what you see. You know what I'm saying? From from the loving spirit that I possess, the loving heart that I possess, the uh, the fearlessness that I possess. You know, it's just it's just it's just an, a, another way of letting you know that there's more to me than than uh, j- than just what you see. Um, you know yeah. how you know how you hear the when you see the word more, it's M O R E. The exclamation is just the R E. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. And you know, I also noticed like. Um... Back back when they were Bone Enterprise, when they put out Faces of Death, you know, they shut out the, the Mo Thug organization, which, you know, I've had a lot of you guys say, hey, that was just kind of like a crew back then. It wasn't a label, but they did it the same way in that. It was Mo exclamation point, you know, thug. So it, right. was, it was cool to see that. Um, let, let me ask while we're talking Poetic Hustlers, um, what made you guys remix like the Searching for Peace record and, and put it on your album as well? You know, I mean, was it just special to you guys? I mean, was that remix always there? Like, how come that ended up on you know both records? Because it, it was it was a it was a staple for Poetic Hustlers. Um, Searching for Peace was just um, an indication of where we saw ourselves and what we felt. Uh, uh, people can relate to. Everybody's searching for peace. You know what I'm saying? Everybody goes through something in life. And you, 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 you're searching for a, um, a peace of mind, a peace of, a piece of just uh, 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 serenity. You know what I'm saying? We, we're so bombarded with so much negativity in, 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 in the world and in today's society. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's a heartfelt thing to, you know, to, to extend peace and love to everybody so for us to feel like searching for peace we know that everybody's searching for peace because you know who who's who's not going through something yeah I, and we want to you know. we wanted to encourage we wanted to encourage and uplift people yeah i think your That's your record I, I mean i agree i mean i was gonna say even though you know you can tell that you know, the three of you, you know, you came from Cleveland, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, there's there's definitely some some street topics, cross me and you die, you know, shit like that. You you can also tell that the poetic hustlers, I mean, you guys, I'm not going to say more than any, you know, anybody else, but I mean, you guys really brought that positive nature. And I mean, your album the whole way through. And again, not not just even the words, even the vibe, the the music. Uh, that was, you know, created with you guys. It's it's the whole vibe from beginning to end um, on that record that, I, you know, that I really feel. Um, that that record, I, I've had it since, if I didn't get it as soon as it came out, I, I must have got it right after. It's always stuck out to me, even before I knew who you guys were as individuals when I first picked it up uh, and, and I saw that cover, you know, one one being sunk down, you know, towards hell, uh, you know, one as an angel. Did did you guys come up with that or who came up with the um the concept for that that cover art? All three of us did. All three of us did actually. Um um the the title the title actually I, I came up with uh the search the title for search for peace I actually came up with um, uh, but once we once we uh, started moving as a cohesive unit and knowing that this is where we were and what we were uh, attempting to project to the to the masses, um, we were all on board and knew that you know this is something that we were you know in a sense we were called to do. So yeah. we all we all played our part and.
we, we came together to, to make it uh, uh, a unifying effort. I, I was going to ask you, you know, a, a lot of the fans um, often consider like Lazy Bone, like the leader of Bone and Mo Thug. I mean, did Poetic Hustlers have like a lead guy or did you kind of all pull the same equal weight? No, we all pulled the same equal weight. We we and that's that that is what what um, encompasses who we are. You know what I'm saying? Because we, no one was greater than the other one. No one was lesser than the other one. We were all on an equal level, and we all played our part equally. Yeah, we, we, I was always we were talking a, a about... huge. I was always a huge fan of Time Will Reveal, especially the acoustic version of all your tracks that you've done. Which which is the one that's your most favorite? <laughs> Truthfully, I, I love um, the original "Searching for Peace." Um, I actually love the "Weekend Buzz." Um, yes. I definitely love uh, "Smiling in Your Face," um, and um, my all time is um, "Don't Trust a Bitch." <laughs> And yeah. and that was actually that was the actual first track that I recorded coming out of out of prison. Damn. Coming That's... straight off of the plane, once the plane landed in, in LA, from LA to the to the studio, from the studio I mean, uh from the um airport to the studio. Once I got in the studio I heard the track to uh, Don't Trust the Bitch and I was the first one to go in and lay my track because I was feeling that I was feeling that beat. I was going through some uh, 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 relationship wise, and I and I had something to get off my chest. So what you hear from that that verse that was actually I was feeling something coming out of prison and into into that booth. Wow, that's so crazy to me that I mean that you were you know, just fresh out of the can and, and just like in the booth. And I mean, you hear that story a lot in hip hop, but you wouldn't know it again, just hearing the Poetic Hustlers album. I'm always honest with my guests, you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't sit and tell you that, um, you know, it, it was a, it was a five mic classic. Uh, right. Because again, you could, you could tell, even though I couldn't tell it was your first record, you, you could tell that you guys were, you know, on the come up, but I had no idea that it was that fresh because I would have easily given this, you know, a, you know, a three and a half to a four. And in a lot of places did. I mean, the source gave it a three, which back then to even get a three from the source with what you guys were competing hey, with. It was like, fucking that was like wild. love to get a three. Wild, wild. In 97, fucking wild. You're competing with Pac, Big, J, uh, Bone, you know, that, that's, that's a huge score to get. Um, that, that's crazy. And, and I, I heard you mention, uh, smiling in your face and i'm glad you mentioned that because i think that's like i i always think that's the the most underrated track from the album and i i dig the fuck out of that every time that hook kicks in yeah that's 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 mine from there um <clears throat> as far as the music videos that you guys did we know you guys got the two we actually recently just spoke to to archie about two true and, and he said that they were supposed to get two uh as well that that was kind of looked like it was going to be the thing everybody was going to get their their two videos uh did you guys choose your singles day and night and trials and tribulations or or did like you know the label kind of feel those were the best yes we did we we chose uh which singles we wanted to come out first uh actually um my brothers they wanted to put out um one of the songs i believe it was like uh uh, uh don't trust a bitch or a weekend buzz and i was like no I was like, you. Uh, I think we should put out. We should put out the uh, the uh, the trials and tribulation single. We should put that out as the first single. You know what I'm saying? Because that it really uh, uh, it, it shows you and, and 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 it reveals who we are as a group and as individual. You know, uh, uh, intellectuals. So yeah, um, <clears throat> I, I wanted to. I wanted us to come across because. Uh, I don't. I don't. For for one thing, I didn't want us to come off as as abrasive as you know uh, most artists do when they come out. You know, I didn't want us because that's not what I wanted pro, pro, wanted to project. You know, I wanted I wanted us to project the the positivity and and just coming from uh, a negative state of mind and being to positiveness. I I think you guys. I mean. 
in in my opinion, and, and this is I've I've heard your record many many times, man. I'll, I'll tell you many many times I've heard that record. Uh, I own two copies of it. One of them I've literally had since '96. I think that was a great pick. I mean, the, the title track "Trials and Tribulations," the the vibe, the the chorus, the verses. It it really does set the bar for what you know poetic hustlers uh, is and and what it represented. So you know I. I think that was a great pick. Was was there a particular video you you know you liked filming more uh, out of the two of them? Um, I actually like you know what I I like the um I like the um the um I mean the uh, um day and night day, day and night. night yeah I love the day and night video I love that one because it 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 seemed um it was more more action there. You know, yeah. um, had a storyline. It, it wasn't. It wasn't as laid back as the first one was, where we were just more or less dancing around and we were having a good time. This one, uh, uh, day and night, you had more action. I was running. I was running, and we were having car chase scenes, and you know, we were having like different moments where the the the, the camera was capturing capturing us and. Uh, um, in like um, a movie setting, almost, you know, it, it, it almost puts you in the mind of you were watching a, a, a short movie clip. Yeah. And I mean, I was going to say it had the storyline, the trials and tribulations is an, is an excellent video, but it's definitely kind of the generic, you know, rap video where you guys just kind of rap to the camera and, uh, right. You know, versus day and night, you guys had a, you know, a heavy storyline. Of course, the lazy bone cameo was, was awesome. Um, right. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that one as well. Uh, you you guys you, you had your record and this is pre-internet of course so when you get a record deal back then it's it's different than than today um so people saw you get this deal you know of course you have albums come off you guys take off a tour but but people aren't seeing that but you guys went on planet groove uh as the poetic hustlers you know what was that like for for people back home to see you guys on TV? They'd probably seen Bone a bunch, but to see you guys pop up that that must have been something amazing. Yes, it was. It was it was completely astounding because you know you had you had so many people like, hey, I seen you. I seen the I seen the uh, the BT thing. I seen you, yeah. man. Y'all was doing it. Y'all was lying, man. That was cold blooded, man. Like, man. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? You get a lot of love. You got a lot of love, and you got a lot of, you know, uh, well wishes on it. And, you know, just people just showing the love, you know? Yeah. It was an no, exciting I... time, you know, just knowing that, hey, you know, um, um, it's one thing to – to, to, to just record and or just perform a little something. But from when you take it from that step to being being on uh, 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 national television and you're performing, it's it's a whole nother you're you're on a whole nother scale now. So for for us, you know, to 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 make it to that point, it was it was a um it was a a, a great thing for me because as I said, that's something I always aspire to do. So it was very awestruck for us to be actually on TV live on BET, Planet Groove, and performing our second single. That was a, that was a great thing. You, and, you guys had is, such composure. Like the, the amount of, I was watching the performance yesterday, and I was like, man, these guys knew what they were doing. You guys look like veterans, pros, just performing. All three of you. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. 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 H had you guys been touring a lot by the time you went on uh Planet Groove? Yes, actually we were uh because we were uh we were performing uh we were performing songs off of the uh uh the first Mo Thug album. And then we were performing uh once the uh second compilation dropped, we were performing not only from the first album but we were performing Mo Thug and from the second compilation as well as uh, uh, a couple of our songs off of the Trials and Tribulation album. Oh yeah, so you guys had a had a, a lot of stage time by the time you hit Planet Groove. So you guys were able to, to give that five star performance. Was that was that the only time you guys got on national TV, or did you guys have any other appearances? You know, actually, that was that was our only time. Um, we were actually um, um, when they did the Soul Train. Uh, the Soul Train performance, uh, we actually didn't, we were there, but we actually didn't get to perform. And I think um, whoever performed there, they performed because we had already performed at uh, the BET, for BET. I, 
I was going to ask you a little bit about, you know, <clears throat> there's some photos, and, and this is going to tie into the, the Soul Train piece, but there's some photos that were released at one point, and it's uh, Crazy, Felicia, Soldier Boy, Thug Queen, and you. Do, do you remember the photos I'm talking about? Yeah, yes, I do. I remember the interview, the photo session, everything. Those those photos look like they happened really close to that that Soul Train appearance because everyone that I just listed was on that Soul Train appearance with the exception uh, of you. Um, were, were were those close to the same time frame? Yes, they were actually at this at that same time. That same that same uh, uh, that same performance. Okay. We were we had just shot those pics. Yeah, that's what I that's what I thought. What was there? I mean, was there a purpose for it being that group of mo thugs in that photo? I mean, was there at any point like the thought of like that group making a record, or was there some reason why it was just you know you guys in that photo? Because I mean, it's just like a a collective of the mo thugs. You don't have the other poetic hustlers in there, you know? Right. Well, what eventually ended up happening is. Um, a lot of members of the Mo Thug family had already uh, um, um, shied away or left the ship. So you had the, those were the last of the Mohican that you saw um, there in that picture. And um, my purpose, my sole purpose in being in those pictures uh, was <laughs> to continue where the poetic hustlers. Uh, had, had started and left off because um, at this point um, Boogie Knight was incarcerated and Tony Tone decided to not further anymore have any more further dealings with Mo Thug period because of you know uh, uh, um, money issues so uh, with that being said he, he uh, you know he walks away so that leaves me to try to continue you know, uh, and represent four poetic hustlers individually was, and collectively. I was going to ask you, you know, the, the situation that, you know, left you. And I mean, you you come in as the third guy in the group. You you replace, you know, a, a, a you know, a third member. Um, now poetic hustlers have kind of they've gone their way and it just leaves you. So you're still trying to put on for poetic hustlers though. I mean, you're yeah, not just, yeah. you know, done with that situation. No, I was trying to put, I was still putting on for poetic hustlers. Cause at the end of the day, that's, that's what's still out there. That's still what's circulating. So I'm going to, I'm going to mash out on on behalf of poetic hustlers. Yeah. So there's a, wow. there's a poetic hustlers self-titled mixtape. It's just called poetic hustlers. It was put out around 2003 on bottom up records. And there's six tracks that aren't from trials and tribulations on it, but I don't think you're on any of them. The most famous of them is wooed out. Do you know anything about that album? Yeah, that's actually, um, that's actually uh, Tony Tones. That was his label. Bottom up records was his label that he uh, incorporated and um, branded around that time 2003 he and Boog, he and Boog got together and um <clears throat> they collectively uh with another guy by the name of uh um um i forget his name at the time but he was a, a guy from the, from the neighborhood that tony tone and i grew up in so they got together and they came up and produced that album um um and i and i believe i wasn't uh, on that album because at that time I, as again, I was still representing for Poetic Hustlers on a on a, a, a individual tip. You know what I'm saying? On top of doing um, um, undercover work for Thug Line Records back at that time. Yeah, I was where we're, I was going to say we're getting ready to transition to the, into that piece, and I was going to ask if uh, the the specific reason you you weren't on the the Poetic Hustlers mixtape in 2003 is because you were still with you know, bone, whether it was Mo Thug or Thug Line, if that's why you weren't on it, because you were still actually active with them. Yeah, that that's exactly why, because I was I was active I was active as far as Thug Line went. And um I actually um I actually did a a feature on um Crazy Bones Thug Line I mean uh Thug on the line. Yeah. <laughs> I mean no, excuse me, the Thug Mentality, thug uh, mentality. C D. 
Yeah. yeah. I did a I did a feature on that. I did actually did two features on that album. And um one of them was um I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Night Riders. Oh yeah. That was got a the, lot of questions. That was <laughs> that was the initial reason I I didn't I wasn't available for the Wooed Up the Wooed Up album. So b- before <clears throat> was was there a time between Mo Thugs and Thug Line that you were, and, and I use this word loosely, but that, that you were, you know, dropped, like uh, not with them, like the other Poetic Hustlers, or were you with them and you just transitioned from Mo Thug to Thug Line? Yeah, I transitioned from Mo Thug to Thug Line because at this time, again, Boogie Knight was, he was incarcerated and, um, and Tony Tone had all together left Mo Thug. So I was, you know, I was left, you know, repping Poetic Hustlers and, you know, and I still rep Poetic Hustlers to this day, you know, um, that's, that's never going to stop. I'm going to rep Poetic Hustlers, Mohar and Poetic Hustlers to the day I die. So tell me about how the offer then to, to go from a, being a, you know, a Mo Thug, a Poetic Hustler, how did the offer come about to become a Night Rider? And, and like when Crazy explained it to you, the idea, the makeup, the voices, the, the pirate outfits, like what was your reaction to it? Shoot, I was with it because it was something different. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't trying to all together just, you know, just do that. But I figured, hey, this it's it's another way to keep on going and to um to further to further, you know, the notches on my belt. You know, so um it it was a it, to me it was a great idea, you know what I'm saying? And the way the way I, you know, I uh did my costume or I, uh, the, the 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 um creativity behind the way that I dressed myself it was, you know, it was my own creativity. Even though he came up with the idea of the pirate outfits and stuff like that, I added my own flair to what he initially wanted us to come come across as. You yeah, know, um, that's cool. From you, the made, name, you made it yours. From 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 the name that I that I uh, used to, you know, the the persona that I played. You know, it was it was you know it was all my my doing. You know, even though he came up, well, we're going to be called this and we're going to say we're from this place and, you know, we're going to act like this and we're going to do this. You know, that, uh, you know, I just added my own flair to what he what he envisioned. Did did you find that you were able to, like, almost like express a side of you on record that that you hadn't been able to, like, as just like Mo Hart and the Poetic Hustlers? Because you almost had this anonymous character you were allowed to play versus having to be Mo Hart. Right. And yes, I, I, I really, I really took that on. And like, and when I say that, I, I kind of like, um, um, I, I embodied that person and that, that character, I actually started embodying that character. Like, um, my name was Michael Knight. M I M I K A L K N E I G H T. And um just a different uh way of spelling, you know what I'm saying, as opposed to how you normally spell Michael. Just giving it a different look when you look at it, but you know it says Michael, you know, yeah. and then um and then, you know, just keeping in mind, okay, we calling ourselves the night riders. Hey, I jumped on the first thing that came to mind. Hey, I can uh, I can change the name of Michael and still call myself Michael Knight, but add an AKA, which which I call myself Deadly Whispers. That's my AKA, and I really, like I said, I really embodied and 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 personified that character to the point where um, I didn't have to use the alterations to my voice. I actually I actually inflected my voice as you hear it. It's actually my my normal voice. I just changed the pitches. Oh shit! Okay, yeah, that's cool. I, I, didn't, I, get... use, I didn't use I didn't use any of the 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 equipment that they had to change your voice. None of that. I you that was all natural. That was all me. So I just I just want to be clear on something. So you said you you went by Michael Knight and your AKA was Deadly Whispers. Yeah. Um, 
I that that's cool to hear because I've seen and you know people fans for years have tried to put together some of the you know e- even though we know that Night Riders was made up of crazy and you know different you know former mo thugs and thug line artists and whatnot it was still there's still a lot of uh, mystery there and one of them I think there's always been confusion that Sin was Deadly Whispers and you were the Widowmaker was Sin nah, the nah. Widowmaker. No, um, sin is actually um, silence. That's right. Okay, and, and so it's crazy. Silence, and and um and and um, no, I, I take that back. He is the widow maker, and and um, and crazy is silence. Yeah, crazy silence, like silent warrior, right? And then you guys had uh, Larice in there. Yeah. Um, now, but there there were some. There was some a lot of roster changes to my knowledge uh, with yeah, the Night Riders. Uh, like Riders. I, yeah, I, I've heard, and and you can tell me if any of these you know ring a bell. But I've I've heard in all my interviews that there was the possibility at one point of of Soldier being in it, Jazz being in it. Uh, I heard no. uh, Felicia. No. Um, who else? Let's see who else. Thug Queen. Yeah. Thug Queen, it, it actually was, uh, it actually was uh, Larice. well, Thug Queen first, and then it went from Thug Queen to Larice. Larice a- actually ended up being the original, and uh, I mean, because, because she, you know, she embodied something totally different and brought something wilder to Knight Riders. So she actually ended up being the actual, uh, the actual female for Knight Riders, Larice was. Was it, was it just no, not like the no, right no, fit no, for Thug Boy Queen? Never, huh? Well, I was just gonna say, was it just not the right fit for Thug Queen? Was it just like not something she was uh, was, yeah, was into? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't her her fit. And Soldier it's, never. It, it wasn't never Soldier. It was always Sin Crazy. Uh, the only people that got rostered around were uh, Larice and and Thug Queen. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, Romeo Antonio, th- there was a lot of rock sound on that on that record. Did did he have input on some of those tracks as well with with all the guitars and shit like that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and he's a he's a he's a unique guy. I, I, I love his talents, and you know he 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 definitely brought the strings to to the Night Rider album. His creativity yeah. is off the chain. The, the Night Rider album, man, is is pretty. It's pretty unique. Like I said, I mean, you know, as a fan, when Thug Mentality '99 dropped, and again, we don't have the internet, so we can go ruin everything. So we just had this one song. We know Crazy played Silence in the song, but then he also came on as Crazy Bone to, to try to pull us away right. from thinking that it was him. Uh, that that mystery. I mean, that mystery was good, and and I'll tell you, it was like it was cool too as a fan when we eventually found out like. Yo, that's fucking Mo Hart and Sin in that. Like right. that's that you know. So that was cool as well. I, I was watching and I saw online that there's a and it's the only video that I can find. But there's a uh, clip of the Night Riders doing "Here We Come." Um, yeah. Did, did you guys do a lot of performances, or was that the only one that Night Riders actually did? Actually, to be truthful, that was the only one we did. That was the only performance we did. And we were actually at a, a, a rap, a rap summit, um, um, that you see there in that footage. We, that's actually, uh, located, uh, that was actually at a, um, a, a rap convention and we were, uh, we were performing there and, you know, just to, uh, um, be seen and, you know, um, to be, to be heard actually, you know, <laughs> Um, now, now was Bone or Mo Thug on that at all, or was it just the Night Riders? No, it was just it was just Night Thug Line and Night Riders. Oh, wow. And wow. the only and the only people and the only people and we were the only people there representing Thug Line was Night Riders. Now backstage at that, especially in that situation where you're the only you know Thug Line Bone affiliates there at all, um, when you guys were backstage did people know that it was you? Like, I mean, was crazy walking around as crazy or did you guys go right to the locker room and, and no one had any idea who the night riders were? No, actually crazy bone was, 
was dressed as Crazy Bone, and um, the rest of us were uh, dressed in our Night Rider costumes, and we were walking around, and we were walking with him, and you know, people were looking at us, and they like, <laughs> they you know, they like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> like, who was these dudes? Who was these people with Crazy Bone? You know, they trying to figure what's going on. You're getting people, they, they whispering. You got people taking pictures. You know, it's just a, a, a lot of different reactions. Yeah, you know? that's awesome. What what was the crowd like? I mean, the re- the reception for, for that. I mean, it, it, it was it was a, a, an, in awe, in awe, because people, I, I really believe, like, people couldn't believe that this was, they were actually seeing this before their eyes you know what i'm saying i mean yeah. we were dressed we were dressed kind of uh uh even though we had the pirate suits but there was a flair to the pirate suits we had the capes we had the you know yeah, we yeah. had the swords and we had the uh we had the, the the pirate boots with the with the with the the flaps over the knees and you know and the the ruffles the shirts with the ruffles on the sleeves and the, yes. you know it was it was really fun and then we actually had the actual um mass um the um uh synthetic masks that were glued to our face and they actually moved with our face as we talked and everything wow yeah i noticed that like you weren't holding traditional microphones even you guys had like the headset microphones on yeah um yeah and and i you know i and when i watched that performance like you know crazy even all of you guys really i mean you guys had a real almost cool choreographed movement that like made you think of that pirate you know just that pirate feeling did you guys practice as the night riders or i mean did you guys yeah. just go on and do that no, we actually practiced. We actually practiced, rehearsed uh, our moves. We actually had a, a, that was actually a dance step you were seeing in that video. If you could really see, we actually had a dance routine, you know, to that song. Yeah. Did, did you guys just do that song or did you guys do more than that song that night? We actually, we actually did a full album of 11 tracks that you can actually, wow. you can actually wow. um, listen to on YouTube. Just yeah. punch us up. Just punch us up, and you'll see all the tracks that we recorded. You, now, you how come there was never the follow up? Holy cow! Okay, I, I got something to do after this show, man. I can't wait to see all that. That's amazing. I, I haven't been able to find that's literally the "Here We Come" performance is the only one that I can find them doing live. Um, yeah, I, I hope somebody, if anybody listening has any of that other footage, you know, make sure you you email us, send it to us. Let's get that live because I think I think that's something fans want to see. Were Were you guys happy about the the performance after, like backstage when you guys were talking? Were you guys good with it, or you know, what was like? The yeah, feeling because after? because. It, it, it was more of a. It was more of a. We were laughing. We were amused at it because we actually we act. This was our first time actually in front of people with these with these costumes on and actually performing to the uh, doing the routine and everything. We were actually like trip, like laughing, like this. This is off the hook. Like you know, you had some people they were laughing. Some people was like, what the fuck. Some people was, you know, they was in tune with it, like they was jamming, but they was like, "What the hell?" You know, we, I'm jumping around, I'm running through the crowd, and I'm jumping off the stage and standing on people's tables, and you know, they, just, <laughs> you know, people like, "Well, what? Who is these dudes? And what is they on?" Because it's like, it's like, you know, you you never knew what to expect with those night riders. Yeah, this. I mean, it. You know, it's it's dope. I I always like that. It kind of. Like I said, it, it gave you guys a uh, an opportunity to do, you know, something different. And I was happy to hear that you, you know, you were excited to do it as well because the Night Riders to me, I mean, it seemed very natural for Sin. You know, the uh, yeah. graveyard shift, uh, yeah. Night Riders, a lot of parallels there, even crazy. Um, but when I found out you were in it be- because of Poetic Hustlers, you know, and everything and the positive message behind Poetic Hustlers, it, you know, it made me go. Wow, I, I, you know, I was kind of shocked that Mo Hart was in it, um, just because the, again, the contrast of you versus your Knight Riders character is much different versus like Sin and and you know his Knight Riders character. There, right. you know, there's right. a, a lot of parallels. So, um, I mean, it sounds like that was a good experience for you guys. That you had fun. How how come uh, there was never any more live shows? Uh, because the 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 contracts were not 
were not what they should have been. You know, we were we were actually um, we were uh, given contracts to look over, and uh, they were not in our best interest. So we we uh, naturally declined. And that was just kind of the the end of the the night rider situation. It didn't seem like yeah crazy. I mean, at that point, it, it, it almost felt like uh, and even though you guys were a character quote unquote um it almost felt like he he just couldn't replace you guys like only you guys could do that role at that point right right and to this day i still i still i still um in some aspects i still i still represent michael knight did you what, what had you guys signed the contracts and whatnot i mean regardless of what would have happened contractually what what did you guys have envisioned to actually put out there i mean was it an album did you guys foresee multiple albums or was it kind of like a yeah. one-shot thing no okay. we so actually I, I actually from my standpoint um i actually saw us doing more albums you know doing more performances doing more recording uh doing more appearances because it was something different you know it was uncanny you know, it was something that was, um, at that time, it wasn't unheard of. Yeah, you had the Insane Clown Posse, but they weren't as, as uh, uh, they weren't as, um, um, as we were, you know, with the, yeah, with the, uh, the whole, the whole outfits and, you know, costumes and everything. We were like, we had, if there was a flair with the Night Riders, you know what I'm saying? Even though we were from the underland and we were from the unknown, we only appeared at nighttime. You know, we were we had a certain flair and a certain uh, should you say, je ne sais quoi about ourselves. Even though we were pirates. Did, did you guys ever talk about like what a music video would have looked like? Because I think that would have been really cool. Yeah, and I I still think about that to this day. I, I actually wanted to do a song as Michael, a, a solo song as Michael Knight. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, uh, release it. Um, but yeah, actually, um, I, 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 I would have loved to, you know, to actually continue on and, and, and have done something, you know, um, uh, musically as, uh, the Knight Riders. Beyond the- 